Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well. I'm going to mix up some resin and do a piece really quickly. I have an um, artist palette that I poured on and it's ready to be resined. I, do, I did clean it with Dawn dish liquid um, and I think it's pretty much good to go. You can also use mineral water to wipe off any residue, I have been told. So that's just another trick to keep in mind. Uh, it, I'm using Famawood Glaze Coat Resin. It's a craft resin and it's fairly simple to use. There's a part A and B and you have to have exactly equal amounts. So I've marked the cups so that I have an equal amount. Then I'll pour them together in one cup and mix it for three to five minutes. Then pour it in another cup, mix for three to five minutes. So I've got me a little timer here. And I'll start it so that I stay on track with the mixing. You also need to wear a mask, have good ventilation, have a dust-free environment, and um, have a, you have to have a heat torch or a heat gun to pop air bubbles. But resin, even if it says it's non-toxic, you should always take extra safety precautions to uh, make sure that you don't breathe or let any of that. When you heat it, there's chemicals that go into the air that can go into your nose and eyes and things like that. So it's great to wear safety glasses and a mask and everything just for safety purposes. I'm not going to talk through the rest of this. I'm just going to mix. You'll see me mixing and then coating the piece and I'm on a silicone mat so when it's finished and dry it will peel right off the silicone. I also have the back of my piece taped with frog tape. That keeps it so simple when you want to take the back side off you'll have no drips that you'll have on the bottom side of your piece. So I'm going to pour I said equal amounts. And it's very important to have exactly equal amounts. So very important. You only have about 30 minutes working time with this as well. So keep that in mind. So you pour both parts into the cup and this will be more than plenty of resin for this piece. So if I have leftovers I'll just pop it on top of a tile that I've painted or something like that so that I get to use up all the resin. And then when you're totally finished with your piece you cover it so that no dust or animal fur will get into your uh, piece as it dries because that's just natural with an, any environment you're going to have some dust particles and fur and hair that float around so you've got to uh, cover your piece and in 24 hours it will be dried and cured and fully cured in about three days probably. Also a good thing to do is to wipe your sides of your product every so often to make sure that nothing sticks and does not get mixed in because there are two different chemicals that react with each other so it's very important to constantly wipe your stick and sides as you stir. And I'm going to stop talking and you'll just see the rest from here. Okay, so now I'm going to transfer this to the other cup and start my timer and keep stirring.
I have one little bit left and I added some um, sparkle to the resin and I'm going to coat this final tile just to see how it turns out with the sparkle in the resin. I've never done that before so I thought this would be a good one to play on because it was just a spare tile that I experimented with. It's a four inch tile. The other one that I just did was a six inch tile. So it's got gold in it and it's definitely tinting the, uh, the tile in a gold fashion which is fine. All right, so the silicone will dry on this mat and it'll peel right off. I did want to show you, this is what I do with my paint skins. Um, if I use a puppy pad, then they dry on the puppy pad and then you just peel it straight off of the plastic. Now the puppy pad has a cotton side. You cannot use that side, you have to use the plastic side but you can, you can peel these drips off and use them to embellish other stuff. You can use them for jewelry. It's a great way to conserve your drips. I've got a big you know, piece right here that was left over from my Arteza pour paints, which I was highly disappointed in them. But I've got this very colorful swatch of dried paint that I could make lots of jewelry with. Also, like this is a blue, uh, I used a blue silicone mat, this is a pink one. And um, I already poured, you know, peeled these off of the blue mat, but that's the beauty of the silicone mats is you can just totally peel all your drips right off the silicone. This was metallics. It's so lovely. And the thing that you have to do once you peel the paint off is you have to put it on like a surface like a puppy pad where it's not on top of other paint because if you put it on top of other paint it will stick to it like glue and you can't get it off. So you have to put it on plastic, uh, wax paper, uh, parchment paper and something like that so that your paint does not stick to anything else or to another piece of paint that's on you know that it might be on top of so you have to peel off and then put it on your plastic somewhere where there's no paint where it won't stick to it but then you have all these lovely pieces of paint skins that you can use later on. And I just layer up my puppy pads in a Tupperware container. Some people put them in notebooks. So there's lots of ways that you can store them and keep them. But you have to put plastic or parchment paper or something between your paints so that they do not stick to each other because it'll just ruin your skins, if you have something beautiful and it's attached to another skin, you won't be able to get them apart. So that's what I do with my paint skins. Like here's another piece of a puppy pad. You just take it and literally peel it off your puppy pad. Just like that. And here's a piece that I've taken off of another puppy pad. So I just keep it on a spot somewhere on a piece of puppy pad that doesn't have paint touching it. And this has a layer of protection so I can lay this right down on top of the other pieces because there's a layer of protection to keep the paint from touching the paint. So I hope you enjoyed this resin video and if you did please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Please share with your friends. I need subscribers. I need thumbs ups, likes. Uh, um, to gain subscribers and to keep my channel going. I appreciate you supporting me and check out all the links below the video and I will see you on the next one.
Take care, hugs, and bye-bye. Here is the paint palette that was resined that brought out the color so much more than the original picture. So, um, just wanted you to see the the shininess of it, and it sold. This will be on my Etsy shop. It's a six inch tile. Hope you can see the sparkle. And it kind of looks like a tree. This was a four inch tile I resined. I decided to add some sparkle in the resin. So it's very shimmery. Well, this one's a coaster. <laughs> 